Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We are so excited that you're here. Don't mind her hair, she's got, this hair has a mind of its own and we love it, huh? We love it. Um, thank you so much for clicking on this video and watching. Um, Alicia is going to be with me during this video, but I'm gonna have her playing right here on her play mat in front of me. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Monday. Um, in today's video, I'm going to share all of my sleeping tips for newborns and babies. Um, now, I want to have a disclaimer that I am not a doctor. I have no idea what I'm doing other than trial and error. I'm a first time mom. Um, so I wanna say also that like, every single baby is different. So things that work for my daughter might not work for your child, um, or it might help your child. Um, so I just wanna throw that out there as a disclaimer. I am not claiming to be a, prof a professional. I'm not claiming to know it all at all. Um, this is all trial and error. Like I said, I am a first time mom. Um, but these things that I did with her um, truly helped her, I think, at least um, sleep better. Um, I also believe Alicia is just a very good sleeper in general. She just has from day one, uh, loves her sleep and she does really good when it comes to sleeping. So um, a lot of it is just her being her. Um, but these are some things and some tips I have that might help your baby um, just get into better sleeping routines and habits. Um, and so let's go ahead and dive into the video. I do have a list here of... Um, it looks like I have like about seven, seven tips that I wrote down uh, to help. A lot of these things I started right off the bat in the newborn stage. Um, as soon as we got home from the hospital, honestly, our first days home, I started all of this with Alicia. Um, she's just laying here watching me talk, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you hear anything, toys rattling, a little baby talk, my daughter is right here in front of me laying on her playmat. Um, okay, so first and foremost, um, I do want to preface, so the reason why I'm making this video is because Alicia, from four weeks old, she was sleeping through the night and she was sleeping at least eight hours straight. Um, she was now... A lot of the times you'll talk to your pediatrician and they will want you to continue to um, wake them up every two hours to eat or so often. Um, I, f I feel like every pediatrician's a little different in that. Um, so I did, um, for the first couple of weeks, my pediatrician did want me to wake her up every two to three hours to make sure she was getting those nighttime feeds because she needed it. She wasn't up into her birth weight yet. Uh, so when she was born, she was 10 pounds, four ounces. And when we left the hospital, she was nine pounds, four ounces. So she had dropped a full pound. Um, so those first couple of weeks that we were home, they wanted me to make sure she was eating on the two hour schedule, uh, just to make sure she was gaining weight. Um, when we went back to the pediatrician, I think it was like at three weeks, two weeks, three weeks, um, Alicia had went right back up to her birth weight and was continuing to put on weight pretty well. Um, so by her one month appointment at four weeks old, I had shared with the pediatrician, hey, she is sleeping through the night. Um, do I need to continue to wake her up every two hours? And they said no, because she was growing fantastically, putting on weight like she should have been. Um, and so, uh, make sure to check with your pediatrician in those newborn stages. Sometimes they will want you to wake them up throughout the night. So at four, four weeks old, she was sleeping through the night and she has been that way ever since. She is now, um, 20 weeks old. So she's about to be five months old, which I cannot believe. No, she can't believe it either. <laughs> but, um, she is growing so fast, huh? She is growing so incredibly fast. It like you blink and they are so old and it's making me sad, huh? I wish time would slow down. Um, but all right, let's get into this, huh? Let's say what helped. Okay. So right off the bat, I was, 
I made sure to really pay attention to her. And what I mean by that is I would watch like how she slept the most comfortable, if that makes sense. So ever since Alicia came out of the womb, she slept with her hands up by her face, no matter what. She always had her hands curled up here or somewhere touching her face, up here touching her face. So I got her the Love to Dream Swaddle. This is the medium size. Uh, they do have a small size, which is what she started out with. I will post a picture of her right here when she was a newborn wearing it. So cute. Um, so what this is, is this allows them to have their hands up by their head while they're sleeping. Um, I think this swaddle played a tremendous part of her sleeping well because she was comfortable. Um, it was a way she liked to, to sleep. So my first tip would be pay attention to your child and their needs as far as like really be intentional of helping them. Um, see if they like their arms down, if they feel more secure with one of the swaddles that Velcro them with their, you know, that, or there's multiple swaddles out there. Um, so see if they're more comfortable with their arms down by their side, if they like their hands free, um, you know, just pay attention to those little things because then you can aid them in, uh, being the most comfortable and helping them get that sleep that they need. Um, second thing help them distinguish day from night so um for alicia what i would do is for her naps during the day i would put her in her bassinet and push it up against the window where the natural sunlight was coming in one reason why i did that is because she did have jaundice so sunlight helps jaundice tremendously um but i also wanted to help her distinguish night from day so every single nap in the morning, you know, throughout the day, it would be, she'd be in her bassinet in natural sunlight. So she would have that sun, uh, that lightness while she was sleeping. At night, I would make sure it was dark, completely dark, except for she had her Hatch sound machine. I will link this below if you saw my newborn favorites video. I highly recommend this sound machine, but it does have a nightlight. So it was just a nightlight, but it was, other than that, it was completely dark in her room. So help them distinguish night from day. A lot of times with newborns, um, they will get them confused and they will think that nighttime is when they're supposed to be up and daytime is when they're supposed to be sleeping and that's when you can have multiple times during the night while they're waking up because they're not they're like oh I'm just napping I'm not you know it's not bedtime it's not time to sleep long periods of times so help them distinguish day from night like I said this is kind of starting off in your newborn stages I will get into where she's at right now and what her schedule is. Um, number three, if you are planning on using a sound machine, so I'm talking like white noise, do it from the very beginning. So I just shared that this is our favorite sound machine. Um, this stays in our room at all times. Um, now this, this is the Hush portable sound machine. I can't recommend this enough. We take it everywhere. The thing is, is I took this in the hospital with us. So ever since Alicia once again came out of the womb, she is heard this noise. Anytime she was sleeping in the hospital, I would turn this on. And now she sleeps so good with white noise. Um, we take it everywhere with us, in the car, if we're shopping, I'll be, you know, walking through Walmart with my sound machine blaring and I don't care who hears it or who's annoyed by it because my baby's sleeping. So um, even though I don't take her to Walmart right now, we're in a pandemic, but that's just an example. So uh, sound machines, if you're gonna use them, I would start up right off the bat. Um, number four, try to put them down while they're napping. This was huge to me, and this is also very hard because when you're in the newborn stage, um, of course you wanna just soak up all the newborn cuddles, and I'm not saying you can't do that. Don't take that as what I'm trying to say, but the majority of Alicia's naps, I would put her down in her bassinet, almost every single nap. Um, sometimes I would like maybe snuggle her for a few, like a 30 minutes, and then lay her down in the bassinet. Um, but I would try to put the majority of her naps in her bassinet. The reason why is because first I wanted her to be comfortable in her bassinet and feel safe and secure in it. Uh, second, I did not want her to need to be held to stay asleep, to be held in my arms or to um, be asleep. I didn't need, I, I wanted her to get out of the habit of like having to physically touch me or my husband to stay asleep. 
So once again, you do miss out on some of those newborn cuddles. And I'm not saying like here and there, I would absolutely hold her for all of her naps. I'm not saying like, you know, don't ever snuggle and hold your baby. No. But what I'm saying is like when you're trying to get them into that routine of sleeping, um, try to lay them down in their bassinets, specifically their bassinets. Uh, for naps just so they get used to it and they like it and they feel secure and comfortable in it A lot of times babies don't sleep. I think personally like I said, I'm not a professional. This is all just opinion based um, I think a lot of times babies don't sleep well is because they don't feel secure if you're holding them the whole time Of course, they're gonna feel secure and comfortable You're their mom or their parent and you're holding them and snuggling them but like once you lay them down a bassinet or like at night when you're trying to get them to sleep at night and you lay them down in the best night, they might not feel comfy or secure. Um, and so they wake up. Um, and so, um, yes, try to lay them down in their best night for naps. Um, number five, this is something I like to do with Alicia, especially now. She, like I said, she is four months going on five months in a week. Um, is we try to have some sort of really interactive time before bedtime so i'll bring her in here lay her on her um her play mat and let her play and explore um sometimes i'll just put her in her swing and let her watch the mobile or play with toys and stuff in there um just so i can get her a little tuckered out before she goes to bed so we do some extra play time right before bed um just to get her a little bit more sleepy so when it's time to put her down uh, she's already sleepy um, I put on here, make sure they are full. Um, I'm just saying that because I, I'm not saying to over feed your child or anything like that. Um, just watch their hunger cues throughout the days. Make sure, um, they are getting exactly what they need. Um, when they're hungry, you know, just watch their hunger cues. Um, Alicia, like I said, she was sleeping through the night at four, um, at four weeks old but she also picked up in her milk consumption during the day because she was covering for that time she missed during the night so just pay attention to their hunger cues make sure um you know that they aren't hungry before they go to bed that they are you know they have a nice belly full huh yeah okay lastly this is um my number one recommendation or tip when it comes to sleeping uh, and I'm talking about sleeping at night and that is have a routine have a bedtime routine for them now I started Alicia on her bedtime routine the day we came home from the hospital and I have not deterred from that like I have not um, changed her routine at all um, so she has been in a routine since day one now if your baby is older now like in the you know four or five months and you don't have a routine established that's okay that doesn't you don't have to like start in the newborn stages for you to get a routine down if that makes sense like if you haven't been on a routine it's okay to start today i uh, start with a routine and just um of course they're gonna have to take a couple days to get adjusted to it but um, they will, they will adjust to it. And so um, I just highly suggest to start a routine, even if they're in their newborn phase, uh, start a routine with them. So for that being said, the thing with, I think with babies is they are, they're little humans. I think sometimes we forget that they are humans. They are small humans. And I don't know about you, but for me, I like routine. I like um, knowing what I'm going to be doing. And I think the same sense for babies, for newborns is that they, they crave that that feeling of feeling secure and feeling okay um, and I think routines help that that they they expect it they know what's about to happen and you you might not think that they do because they're so little but I'm telling you they do especially at Alicia's age Alicia is a little sponge she literally soaks up everything that's happening around her um, the kids at my work will stick their tongue out at her and she will stick it right back out because that's what she's doing. She's exploring her world. She's a little sponge. She's taking it all in and she loves to mimic us. Um, so the thing with her, she can expect what's happening. Um, she knows that if I turn her sound machine on in our bedroom that, oh, it's time to go to bed. And she will, like, you will notice her. I'll lay her down and she rubs her eyes. She's like, oh, it's time to go to bed because she knows that's what she, we do every single night. So um, for that being said, I'm going to give you her routine um, just as an example of what we do. And it is not, oh, 
Oh, bless you, baby. Bless you. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you what we do for her, for her routine. Yeah. Um, so, uh, she has her, so from like 6 to 6.30, we will do her playtime. And what, and also in that time, I might give her a bath. So I bathe her every other day. I do not bathe her every single day. I do every other day. Um, so on the days that I'm giving her a bath, it'll be between 6 and 6.30. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll give her some playtime. So depending on the day, it'll either be a bath or playtime. So 6 to 6.30, that is her time for play or bath. From 6.30 to 7, that is when she gets her last bottle of the day. So she will... <laughs> yeah, you want to tell them your routine? Um, so from 6.30 to 7, I will take her into... Um, I'll take her into here. I will change her diaper. I will put her in a long sleeve onesie, socks on, and we will go into my room, which is where she sleeps. She sleeps in her bassinet in my room. So we'll go in my room. I'll turn the sound machine on. We'll sit in bed and I will feed her. <laughs> or she feeds herself now, but I will we'll feed her um, her last bottle. After that's done, I will burp her, and from like 7 to at least 7.20, I keep her sitting up and burp her, make sure she burps. I keep her sitting up just so, in case she's going to spit up. She has, you know, it just has time to let that milk settle before you lay them flat on their back. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> so then what I do is I put her in this magic or this Baby Merlin's Magic Sleep Suit. Uh, this went viral on TikTok. Um, so it's basically this, she looks like a little marshmallow or a sumo wrestler in it when she's in it. Um, so I transitioned her. She was in this Love to Dream swaddle up until four months. Um, and then at four months, I did transition her into this. Now, Alicia does not roll much. She does not like to roll. Um, so I'm okay with putting her in here. If you have a baby that is very, that rolls constantly and they like to roll, they roll in their sleep, you cannot put them in this. They don't recommend you put them in this just because um, they might not be able to roll easily and get stuck or anything like that. So make sure, um, you know, as long as your child, you know, still sleeps on their back, I do highly recommend this sleep suit. Um, this is... This is an amazing sleep suit for sure. Uh, she went from sleeping like nine hours normally to 12 hours in this. So Alicia does sleep 12 hours a night. Um, and the sleep suit uh, has a lot to do with that. Um, so it's just really padded. It's nice. Uh, I can, I think it's like feels a little bit weighted. So they feel secure in it. Um, so the sleep suit. So I will... She sits up for a little bit, then I lay her down, put her in her sleep suit, zip her up. After that, I rub this Wellamins All Purpose Balm on her face every single night. Um, I've been doing this since she was a newborn. Um, I will leave this link below. Um, so I put that balm all over her face. I turn off the lights and give her her binky. She does sleep with her binky. She loves her binky, but she also... If she spits it out during the night, she doesn't wake up. Um, and so, uh, she loves her binky, so she's kicking. But um, I'll put her binky in. And so, what I will do from there is I either lay her straight in her bassinet and let her fall asleep by herself. Um, and sometimes I'll just, like, rock her bassinet just a tiny bit, help her, uh, you know, fall asleep. Or sometimes I'll lay next to her in my bed and um, just let her fall asleep by herself in my bed and I'll put her in her best it depends um I do love to lay with her while she's falling asleep just to soak up those those little cuddles but um I let her try to fall asleep by herself meaning I don't really like sit there and um like I don't consistently rock her and stuff I kind of just like let her um now if she does need help you know of course I will pick her up I will rock her I will pet her but whatever you know, I think she needs as far as to help her go to sleep, but a lot of times I just let her do it herself. Um, and then I will move her from my bed into the bassinet and she will sleep until seven o'clock the next day. Um, so she's normally asleep by seven, between 7.30 and eight. She'll fall asleep within that window normally. Yeah. Um, okay. So that is her routine. Um, 
One last thing I want to share. When it comes to baby sleep, a lot of times um, we wake them up. Uh, we do a lot of damage when it comes to their sleeping. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of times, like for example, Alicia will start making noises. <laughs> will start making noises uh, during the night while she's sleeping. And before I would instantly pick her up with, in reality, she wasn't actually awake. She was just going, I believe they say like between sleep cycles and they could just kind of like stir a little bit. Um, and I would pick her up and the harm in that is I was actually waking her up. She wasn't awake originally. I just thought she was because she was making noises and stuff. And, um, I would pick her up and she would wake up and be awake and be, and it would take forever for her to fall back asleep. So now what I do is when she's laying in her bassinet, I, if she starts making noises, I'll just sit up and I watch her. I see if her eyes are going to open, if she is actually awake or if her eyes are closed and she's just stirring. Sometimes they stir, they move around just to put themselves back to sleep. Uh, sometimes I will like put her binky back in if she needs it. Um, anything like that, like I, or I'll like gently rock her bassinet just to kind of help her transition into that next cycle of sleep. Um, and then she normally is right back to bed and sleeps the rest of the night. She doesn't actually wake up. So watch that too. Sometimes they just like, they wake up during, um, sleep cycles or they're like just, um, you know, just stirring a little bit, dreaming maybe. A lot of times we think that they're actually awake and we like pick them up and then they are, you know, you wake them up. Um, so just watch for that too. If they're waking up a little bit during the night or making noises and stuff, just pay attention to them. Don't instantly pick them up. Um, and just watch and see if they're actually waking up or if they're just trying to go back to sleep or dreaming or in between sleep cycles, all of that. All right, other than that, uh, that's it. Those are all my tips. Like I said, every baby is different. Um, the, these tips might help your child. They might, you know, not. Oh, I don't know if, you know what I mean? It's every um, child is different. So, um, this girl in her wild hair. Um, you say hi? <laughs> Um, every child is different and so um, but I do hope this helps um, and so if you have any questions or um, anything suggestions for upcoming videos please let me know in the comments below um, and I'll see you in the next video you say hi or bye look hey look she wants, she's looking at all of her toys. <laughs> all right, guys, have a wonderful day.